Hi, welcome to an Arduino step-by-step -step course by RoboJax. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to use this L293D quadruple H drive uh, motor driver. This, this can be used to control DC motor with a current of 600 milliampere. And the operating voltage of this one is between 4.5 to 36 volts. Here is the data sheet for L293 and L293D. We are concerned with L293D. This is called quadruple half bridge. Every time we mention the word a half bridge or full bridge. Full bridge means uh, if you are able to control a motor in two direction that is called full bridge and every time you can just control a motor turn it on and off without being able to control the direction that is called half bridge. When this is quadruple half bridge it means it has dual full bridge which means it can control two motors fully in both direction clockwise and counterclockwise. Counter we are going to use it and see the operating voltage is 4.5 to 36 volts. What it means is that you can use a 5 volts motor, 6 volts, 12 volts, 24, 36 volts. Any voltage between this range will be able to operate or control by this uh, motor controller. It has separate logic input, which means you can control it using Arduino, which can have a separate voltage of 5 volts, and the motor will have a separate voltage. High noise immunity, which means noise will not have affected. It has internal electrostatic discharge protection, so it will protect it against any electrostatic when your body has a static charges. When you touch the device, it will protect it. This is an important part that we need to have a look at it. For L293D, the maximum current each channel or per channel will be 600 milliampere. Maximum peak, the output peak current for L293D will be 1.2. And there is 2 ampere for the L293, and 1 ampere per channel is 293. Before, we need a diode clamp for inductive transient, and L293D, D means diode. That this device has already built in diode and it makes circuitry and wiring very easy. So this is a logic diagram. This is a motor driver. So we have quadruple. We have four of this. This is the input and that is the output. Most of the time because you control a motor in both directions, this pin one is for this half bridge and this half bridge. Uh, one and two. So this is half bridge one, half bridge two and this is 3 and 4. So 1 and 2 can be enabled using this pin. You put, you connect this pin to 5 volts and this will be enabled. Then you can control it, turn on and off. So this is on and off and this is control. In the next tutorial we are going to talk about this. But for now just learn that this can, this should be high in order for the output to be high. Voltage, the control signal comes here and it waits until this is high. When this is high, the current will pass. And the same thing, if this is high, this will pass. And we will co connect our motor. And these 2, 1, 7, 10, 9, and 15, these numbers are the pin of the chip. Remember 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. All A's are the input, and Y are the output. 1A and 1Y. 1A is the input of this quadruple driver and 1y is the output and the same thing 2a 2y 3a 3y and 4a 4y and each of them have uh, uh, their own pin on the actual physical chip and here is a 16 pin chip that we are going to use 1a this is the input of a and that's 1y that's the output of y this, this is one half bridge driver and pin 4 and 5 is heat sink and also it will be connected to the ground on this side also we have pin 12 and 13 or heatsink and ground so we will be connecting 4, 5, 12 and 13 to the ground half bridge number 1 that's half bridge number 2 2A is the input 2Y is the output for both of this on this side we have one enable pin 1, 2 
so if you set this pin 1 to 5 volts or connected to 5 volts this half bridge and this half bridge will be enabled and on this side we have this is VCC2 this is the actual um, power for the motor and this is power for the logic internally in order to control this and turn on and off enable and disable this needs 5 volts so this will be connected in our case to Arduino and this we will see next and this is number three this is a half bridge of number three and this is half bridge number four as you can see a4 is the input and that is the output and the a is the input and 3y is the output and these pins have been numbered from here one two three four five eight pin we have on one side and then eight pin we have on the other side from pin one to pin 16. how we know this because of this notch here uh, you can identify it by this by this and by this round from this side we know that this is forward and this dot here it tells you that one starts from here so this dot will tell you that one starts from here and so you count one two three four five six seven eight eight is here and 16 is there so it comes from here 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16. keep that in mind and that is why that the input 1a will be pin 2 so we will connect the signal from Arduino to this and then this will be the output and we this is enabled which we will connect it to 5 volts or we will use other means and here is how we can control one motor using single half bridge in one direction in order to change the direction of the motor manually we can just switch these two wires otherwise when you turn it on whatever wire you have it will rotate in the preset direction so one a will be high and the output will be connected here and it will wait until enable pin is high in this case in our chip pin 2 is 1a this will be connected to arduino pin 3 is the output we will connect it to the motor and pin 1 of the chip is enabled which we will connect to 5 volts the other side of this wire will be connected to low and here is a wiring diagram for L293D motor driver first on the breadboard I have assigned this line on the breadboard with the blue beside it as in the ground and the one with the red line beside it as 5 volts the 5 volts line have been connected to 5 volts of Arduino the ground have been connected to the ground so we have ground and 5 volts here when you prepare L293D chip working with Arduino first pre prepare your breadboard like this and pay attention here pin 1 is on this side and the notch is here so pin 1 up to 8 and from here 9 to 16 first 2 pin at the middle we have 3 pin on this side 3 pin on this side pin 4 and 5 connect them together with a piece of jumper wire and then from other wire connected to the blue side of this uh, breadboard and then the other side 2 pin together connected with this wire with one piece of wire and then from this or this because they are now together put another wire to the ground so this side is connected to the ground and two pin from the other side have been connected to the ground now two more pin left pin 8 on this side and 16 on the other side 8 will be connected to positive and 16 will be connected to positive this is the logic main one will never change but this one if you need to use your battery you remove it and connect your battery directly here which I'm going to explain it within the wiring diagram when we are using external power and then for the motor we need separate voltage in this case because my motor is 5 volts I'm connecting this wire directly to 5 volts and here is when you need to use external power supply or a battery doesn't matter remove the pin 8 which was connected to this 5 volts and then from your positive terminal of the power supply or the battery connect a wire to pin 8 of this chip and from the negative terminal you must connect also to the ground if you do not connect this 
with one wire the system will not work the chip in terms of power and biasing is done now two pin one is the uh, input input have been connected to pin two and then pin one is enable enable have been connected to pin three of arduino and my motor ground have been connected to the ground and one of the pin of the motor have been connected to pin 3 which is the output for L293D chip this is the L293D chip or IC and here if I tilt it at some angle you will be able see, to see the pin 1 mark here from this dot this is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and then from here 9 it goes up to 16 and here is the pin layout from the data sheet pin 1, 2, pin 16. On my breadboard the blue line on this side have been dedicated for the ground and the red on this side have been dedicated for 5 volts so I will connect my 5 volts from Arduino to this line somewhere and my ground somewhere in here and pin 4 and 5, 12 and 13 are supposed to be connected to the ground and here you can see pin 4 have been connected to pin 5 using this wire have been connected to the ground and pin 12 and 13 have been connected together they are via the yellow wire have been connected to the ground so these two pin at the middle on the left and two pin that at the middle on the right are for the ground pin 16 is VCC1 or logic this have been connected to 5 volts using the blue wire this is the pin 16 VCC1 pin 8 have been connected using this red wire to 5 volts for this reason we will use only one half bridge pin 2 is the input and pin 3 is the output here I have connected pin 2 of Arduino to the pin 2 of this chip and pin 3 of Arduino I have connected it to pin 1 of this chip for my power supply ground have been connected to the ground to the blue side and 5 volts have been connected to this red side for my motor as I've shown you in the wiring diagram blue is my ground and for my motor blue is connected to the ground and this purple or red have been connected to pin 3 now the wiring is done let me now explain the code first we define pin 2 as motor 1 this is our constant which will be used throughout the a code and then we define pin 2 for enable 1 2 and inside the setup we initialize the serial monitor so this can print the text for us with 9600 baud and we use pin mode motor 1 as 2 as outputs and then again we use pin mode enable 2 as output so we don't need any input these two are outputs from Arduino in order to run the motor we have to have enable 1 always high so I use digital write high it will always send pin 3 as high inside the loop this is a very simple control of motor we print this text uh, using serial print ln motor 1 on and then digital write motor 1 this is pin uh, 2 high so we turn motor 1 on and for 5 seconds so this wait means keep the motor running for this five seconds after that we turn the motor to motor one low print this text and then wait for three seconds because this is a loop there is nothing else continuously loop will execute these codes and motor will just run for five seconds stop for three seconds and goes on I've connected the motor as you can see motor is running let me open the serial monitor it will just reset it it prints motor 1 on and also the motor is rotating as you can see it's going clockwise and when it says stop the motor is stopped now if you pay attention and see the motor is rotating clockwise To change the direction of rotation, just swap the two wires from the motor. Let me just change it. Now 
Now the motor will rotate counterclockwise. And here is the new code that you can control the speed. And the change that I brought was that, that I commented this line out by putting this forward slash. So enable pin is not high at the beginning in the setup. Using this enable pin, we send a pulse width modulation signal and control the speed of motor. We set the motor one input high, it must be high. Then we use analog write and for pen enable one two we send two five five of pulse pulse width modulation two five five or two fifty five means maximum and zero means stop so we send that value and also we print this on the screen and we wait for three seconds so the motor runs at two fifty five pulse width modulation value or hundred percent for three seconds after that then we change the speed to half by sending one hundred twenty seven pulse width modulation print the text and this happens for five seconds after that we change the speed to 95 for five seconds then we send zero pulse width modulation which means stop the motor the motor will be stopped for five seconds after that we send again 255 the maximum speed for three seconds and then we use another method again by sending low to the input to stop the motor. As you can see, we can stop the motor either by sending the zero pulse width modulation or sending the input to low. In order for the motor to run, neither of these should be low at any time. When we have zero value at the input, the motor will stop or the motor will slow down. And here, let me connect the motor. And I open the pulse, pulse width modulation. As you can see, this is the maximum speed. And now we are at half speed. Now it's at 95. Then we send zero value. The motor is stopped. Then again at the maximum 255. And this is a stop using low signal. Again the loop repeats 255 and then 127 and then 95 which will be very slow and then zero. As you can see we cannot go to zero because the, this motor, each motor will be different. This motor will stop at around 80 or 90. I tried different value and 95 was the lowest that I could go while the motor was running. This was how to control a motor with the speed without changing the direction. In the next video we are going to have a look at changing the direction of the motor. Please make sure to subscribe by clicking at the subscribe button in here. Thank you. Thank you for watching tutorial from Robojax. If you learned something and found this useful, please thumb up as this will help my video in the search algorithm of YouTube. If you have comment or question, please post it at the comment section below. I try to answer and reply. And don't forget to subscribe so you get updates of my upcoming videos.